Hi, in this video I will discuss what is surface modulation and how we can exploit, explain it quite easily in optical fiber. So this work is the result of a collaboration between Sonia Boscolo from the Aston Institute of Photonic Technology and the Laboratoire Interdisciplinaire Carnot de Bourgogne with Frédéric Odeau that has contributed to the experiment that I will describe. I would like also to acknowledge my colleagues for the very fruitful discussion that I had with them. So this talk will be organized as follows. I will first recall and introduce what is cell-phase modulation. And then I will explain how it is possible to qualitatively understand the physical origin of this process and to show that it is possible to obtain some analytical guidelines that can predict the features of cell phase modulation. In the second part of this talk, I will show a simple experiment where we mitigate the effect of cell phase modulation. So, in this talk, I will only focus on what happens in optical fiber, in single mode optical fiber. And in this case, light propagate uh, following the nonlinear Schrodinger equation that take into account uh, the consequences of dispersion and care nonlinearity. Why do I focus on optical fiber? This is because with optical fiber, as the light is guided, it is not affected by a special effect. Moreover, optical fibers are a perfect as bad. They present a very low level of losses and you can have a very long length of fiber so that uh, cell phase modulation can be observed using only a few watts of peak power and you don't need here to take femtosecond pulses. Here uh, we will only consider uh, the regime where uh, the dispersion can be neglected. This is what we call the highly nonlinear regime and in this case the nonlinear Schrodinger equation is just uh, this following equation that can be solved approximately analytically and uh, in this case of highly nonlinear fiber you can see that the intensity profile of the pulse is not modified by uh, the care nonlinearity. The care nonlinearity only affects the phase of the pulse, the temporal phase of the pulse, and this is why it is called cell phase modulation. So uh, this effect depends on the intensity profile of the pulse, and uh, to better stress it, we can use here a normalized intensity profile. This is a prof uh, the, the intensity profile with a peak power normalized to one. And we can see that the other quantity that appears, this is the product of gamma by uh, the peak power and by the length of propagation. And this product is often referred as the B integral. And it characterizes the maximum level of FSPM, the maximum level of phase that is introduced during the nonlinear propagation. One way to, to plot the consequences of cell phase modulation. Uh, this is uh, a plot that is not often used, but I like this plot because you see directly uh, the level of the B integral. When you compare, uh, this is a polar plot, and you can see that Fourier transform limited pulse is very uh, different regarding its structure uh, compared to a pulse that is affected by SPM. And when you have cell phase modulation, what you will observe, this is a perfect Archimedean spiral. And the number of turns of the spiral is only B divided by 2 pi. And why do I like uh, this kind of plot? This is because I am from Burgundy, and you have here an example of a 6 pi B integral. Well, the main consequences of cell phase modulation, this is that uh, if you change uh, temporarily your phase, then you will modify the instantaneous frequency that you'll have. This is uh, what you call a chirp. 
and this chirp can be uh, quite easily derived analytically. This is just the product of the B integral by the temporal gradient of your intensity profile. And if you change your instant instantaneous frequency, then you will change your spectrum. You can calculate your spectrum just by making the Fourier transform of your temporal field. I like very much Fourier, it is from the same town as my wife, but uh, this process of Fourier transform does not explain completely or easily uh, the feature that you will observe. So here, what we will try to explain more physically, this is why when we make some records of a pulse affected by surface modulation, why we observe very strong oscillation that appears in uh, the extended spectrum. We can see some, uh, some wide oscillation with two strong pitch on each side of the spectrum. So these are results uh, that have been recorded more than 40 years ago. So uh, let us now describe a simple model that can explain some of these features. And in fact here the goal this is to really try to explain to master students that have never seen self-phase modulation what, why it affects so much the spectrum. And in fact the idea here it came from a remark of one of my bachelor students that uh, commented the spectrum uh, that, I sh that I was showing uh, which was affected by surface modulation. It tried to make a link with what is observed in a bioreferent plate. Uh, this is the usual experiment. You put an a polarizer, a bioreferent plate and an analyzer and you see what we call in French uh, spectre cannelé, and we study this in Dijon uh, since the end of the 19th century. So uh, his remark uh, is not completely true, but this is far to be stupid because there can be some connection that can be made uh, with this pattern. Of course, in the case of a bioreferent plate, this is just a linear uh, interference process. In our case, there will be some non-linearity that will happen. So let us start with an initial Fourier transform limited pulse, and the starting point uh, is uh, the chirp. So we here uh, for uh, the ease of calculus, we will start by an exponential pulse, uh, by sorry, a Gaussian pulse, and the chirp profile is easily. Uh, derived, you can find it in all uh, the standard textbooks. So you have the chirp profile and uh, very strong symmetry, so we will only discuss what happens for positive times. So what is also usually found in textbooks, this is the maximum of the chirp and the time at which this maximum occurs. So we see that this time does not depend on the level of cell phase modulation, whereas the maximum uh, uh, omega m does depend on the B integral. This is directly proportional. So when you increase uh, the power, for example, you will increase by the same amount you, the maximum frequency that you have in your spectrum. So. Uh, it is often this quantity omega m is often used to describe the spectral extent of your spectrum, but we will see a bit later that uh, this is perhaps not the most natural uh, quantity. However, we see that uh, the spectral extent is proportional to the B integral. Now, uh, let us see what happens if we consider an instantaneous frequency uh, omega zero that is below omega m. And for such a frequency, we can find that we have this frequency at two different times, t1 and t2. So there is uh, a way to calculate analytically uh, these two times. It involves a Lambert W function. Uh, this function is embedded in most of the standard uh, softwares uh, for numerical simulations, so you just use it uh, as a black box.
So we have a delay between two times uh, at the same frequency. So what uh, will it do? It will lead to an interference. So uh, we will have interference between T1 and T2. And if we have an interference, what do we need to know? This is uh, the phase difference between uh, these two times. And this phase difference will include a linear contribution that will be linked to the delay between the two pulses and a nonlinear contribution that will be linked to cell phase modulation. So regarding the linear contribution, this is simply the product of your frequency by your delay. And we can see that graphically on the plot of the chirp, uh, it can be easily uh, represented. This is the area of this rectangle. So here we have uh, the linear phase shift. Now regarding the nonlinear contribution, it can be shown that this is a product of the B integral by uh, the value of the intensity profile taken at the two different times. And once again, there is a graphical interpretation of this quantity uh, based on the uh, chirped. Uh, and we can see that uh, this nonlinear phase shift, this is the opposite of this area that I have plot uh, in blue. The, uh, so uh, with this graphical interpretation, we clearly see that when we will increase omega zero, we will uh, uh, we will increase also the value of uh, the nonlinear phase contribution. So when omega zero is equal to zero, uh, the nonlinear contribution is equal to minus b. And when omega zero is equal to omega m, then uh, the nonlinear phase shift uh, vanishes. So now regarding the total phase contribution, so the sum of the two previous contribution, uh, once again, we can uh, use the chirp profile and the total chirp. This is this uh, area that I have plot in yellow. This is the opposite of, the ar of this area. And we can have the same kind of conclusion uh, as the nonlinear phase shift. So the total phase shift increase with the frequency from minus b up to zero. Now, when we have uh, the phase, what we usually calculate, this is the requirement to observe a destructive or constructive interference. So here are uh, the equations that need to be fulfilled for destructive or constructive interference. And when I put everything together, uh, we can see that if I increase uh, the B integral, here this is the phase, I will have more constructive or destructive uh, pattern. And we can see also that uh, uh, for the highest frequency, I will always have a constructive interference. So it will be the peak that we have on the side of the spectrum. And once uh, we have the phase, we can uh, calculate the pattern of interference, uh, taking into account that uh, the intensity of uh, at the two times may be different. And we have uh, the, the plot that here is uh, in uh, orange. We can see that when we compare this result with the standard approach based on the Fourier transform, uh, that the agreement regarding the shape is quite good. We have here a very good prediction regarding the minima and the maxima of uh, the spectral pattern. And now we have an understanding of the origin of this pattern. What we can also see, this is that the quantity omega m that is used to describe the extent of the spectrum here, it is not perhaps uh, the most natural one. Perhaps it will be better to use the position of this uh, maximum uh, of oscillations. And in fact, we can derive this expression um, by making further absorption. In, uh, indeed, we can use uh, 
a more simplified model, uh, especially when we work in the vicinity of the maximum frequency. In the previous model that I have described, there was a small point that uh, required some uh, the use of uh, of numerical simulations. It was the use of the, the uh, Lambert W function, and it w it is not so easy to use it analytically. And we can avoid uh, the Lambert function by using a Taylor expansion of your chirp profile around the maximum. And in this case, you approximate you chirp by simply a parabola and you derive quite easily the, the, uh, the time difference between uh, the, the two instants where you have the frequency omega zero. So with this it becomes easier to find the linear and linear contribution and you can have an analytical expression uh, that is fully explicit regarding the location of the first constructive interference. And you see that uh, this uh, result is in pretty good agreement with what uh, we have analytic uh, with a standard approach. So here, uh, this result is a correction compared to omega m. We see that we correct omega m by a factor that depends on p. So when we compare uh, the result obtained by our approach with the standard uh, numerical simulation using a Fourier transform, we can see that uh, the agreement on the shape of the spectrum is very good. So previous results I have described were based on a Gaussian pulse, but we can test it for other pulses such as hyperbolic second pulses or Lorentzian shape. It will also work uh, very well. Now, what is perhaps more interesting, this is to discuss what happens for pulse that have uh, an initial linear chart. So in this case, you had uh, a parabolic phase in the temporal domain. Here I uh, still consider a Gaussian pulse and uh, you can calculate uh, the resulting chirp. Of what you see, this is that depending on the chirp value, then the shape of uh, the total chirp may be very different. You can have four maxima, you can have no extrema in your pulse or here you don't have any extrema, or you can have two extrema. So what could be shown this is that uh, the shape strongly depends on the ratio R, that is the ratio between the input chirp and the B integral. When you have R that is uh, positive, this means that you have used uh, an initial medium of propagation that presents a normal dispersion. When it is negative, this means that your uh, input medium is anomalous. There are a few uh, values that are important. This is minus two and four exponential uh, minus uh, three uh, half. Below two on above 0 0.80, you don't have any extrema on your chirp. So if you do not have extrema uh, for a given frequency, you can only have one time that correspond to this frequency. So you will not see any oscillation in the spectrum. For uh, R that is between minus two and zero, you will observe two extrema. And in the last case, uh, for positive uh, value of R, but below zero, 0 0.8, you will uh, observe four maxima. So the, uh, here there are two examples of two extrema or four extrema. And regarding the case in which uh, we are, the resulting spectrum may be very different. We can see here that the structure of the spectrum for positive value is very di of R is very different from the structure for negative value of R. So 
let us try to understand why the structures are so different and for this we consider uh, first the case where the propagation is in uh, medium with normal dispersion. We have four extrema and what we can see this is that there is a range of frequency for which here for a given frequency we just have a single time that corresponds to this frequency. Here we do not have any interference for those frequencies. So around the center of the spectrum we should not observe some, uh, some strong oscillation. The oscillation will be observed between uh, the, vi the various extrema. And here for this frequency omega zero, what we see, this is that we have this frequency at three different times. So uh, it can, however, be uh, simplified because for the third time, we can see that the intensity here uh, of the pulse is quite negligible. So we, uh, we do not have to take into account uh, this third time. So we can uh, still uh, use a two-wave interference process and we can see here that once again the, the result of our qualitative approach are in quantitative agreement regarding the prediction of the minima and maxima with the numerical uh, simulation. Is it still the case for the other, ca uh, for, uh, the other regime of initial dispersion. So when we consider a pulse that has previously gone through anomalous dispersion, well, what we see, this is that once again, for a given frequency, we may have uh, uh, some energy at two different times. But contrary to the previous case, and in this here, we cannot neglect uh, the intensity of one of those uh, three times. So here what we have to take into account this is not a two-wave interference model but a three-wave interference model. And here we see that a two-wave model is not efficient to reproduce the structure that we have for the spectrum. What we really need to take into account this is a three-wave interference model. This is required to have the good structures of the interference uh, uh, process. So I have finished with this qualitative approach of self-phase modulation that provides some uh, simple guidelines and an understanding of the, uh, the pattern that arises from self-phase modulation. Now, now I would like to say a few words about the mitigation of this uh, self-phase modulation. So self-phase modulation uh, can be uh, used for various applications. There have been plethora of examples where self-phase modulation is the key ingredient of uh, an optical function. However, to be honest, in 90% uh, of the application, people they try to avoid surface modulation. So for this, there are different ways to uh, mitigate surface modulation. And one way, this is to reduce the B integral. So you can reduce the level of nonlinearity by using a large model uh, fiber and local fiber. So you will decrease, decrease uh, your uh, gamma coefficient, uh, but you can also uh, decrease your input P po power. This is the principle of Chirpert's amplification. Another way to avoid the spectral broadening of a pulse, this is uh, to use a soliton pulse, but in this case uh, there are strong requirements regarding the shape of the input pulse and the power uh, that is initially used. You can also use self-similar pulse or parabolic pulse. You will avoid uh, the oscillation in your spectrum, but you will not avoid uh, the, sp uh, the spectral broadening of your spectrum and the change in the uh, temporal uh, properties of your pulse. The last way to mitigate the phase modulation could be to use an artificial negative nonlinear index. So what does it mean? Here, uh, the goal uh, 
uh, will be to use uh, a device that provide a modulation of the phase that is uh, exactly the opposite of cell phase modulation. And such a device uh, exists, it works, this is a phase modulator uh, that can be used to imprint in the temporal domain a fluctuation of the phase that is exactly the opposite of a uh, phase induced by cell phase modulation. And in this case, when you add the two contribution, it will, uh, it will work and the cancellation will be perfect over most of the pulse. However, uh, the requirement uh, is to have a large bandwidth, a large optoelectronic bandwidth to feed uh, the, uh, the external phase modulation. And uh, to produce exactly the good waveform uh, is not so straightforward. So what we wanted to explore, it, uh, this is to know if when we use the simplest waveform that we have, that is the less demanding in terms of two electronic bandwidth, could it be enough uh, to obtain result that uh, seems appropriate? And this, uh, this simple waveform, this is a sinusoidal wave. And here are the results. We here in blue, we have the chirp induced by surface modulation, and in green, uh, in green this is a uh, sinusoidal uh, phase. And when uh, we add the, contrib the two contribution of the chirp, we see that the chirp is nearly cancelled over most of the central part of the pulse. That means that for uh, the times where there is some energy, uh, some significant energy, our pulse will not be impaired by uh, the chirp induced by cell phase modulation. So it seems very good. And moreover, it's quite easy to calculate the parameter of this external sinusoidal modulation. We just have to take into account uh, the time Tm and the maximum frequency omega n, and it will provide uh, the, uh, the frequency of the wave that we have to use on its amplitude. So if I use the polar plot, uh, we clearly see the improvement that we have. Uh, we have here two pulses in blue that are heavily impaired by cell phase modulation. And with the external phase modulation, we can see that the results are much better. And we can see heat also on the spectrum because we can see that the broadening that is induced by cell phase modulation is nearly perfectly cancelled with the external phase modulation. And uh, the cancellation is not perfect because as you see, when we plot the result on a logarithmic scale, there is some energy uh, that remain in the wings of the pulse. Uh, this energy, this is linked to the uh, imperfect compensation in the wings of the pulse. However, the improvement is quite striking and we can show analytically that even if we take the root mean square broadening of the pulse that take into account in this case uh, this wing, we have an improvement by a factor of four of the spectral broadening. So here it really improves the result in terms of spectral wave uh, and also in terms of spectral brilliance, in terms of the maximum of power you have at your uh, central frequency. So the previous results were obtained with a Gaussian pulse, uh, but does it work with other pulse shapes such as an hyperbolic second pulse? The result uh, is yes. Here, the input pulse, when it, uh, when it is affected by cell phase modulation, is strongly broadened. And when we turn the external phase modulation on, we can see that we partly restored uh, the initial pulse shape. It is not perfect, but now if we slightly tune the frequency and the amplitude of the external phase modulation, we have a much better result here in purple. So here uh, we see that we just have to tune uh, 
uh, the, the parameter of our sinusoidal external modulation and the result will be better. However, uh, when we have a look on the polar plot, uh, it is not so straightforward to understand why uh, this is not the, um, uh, the orange curve that provides the best result. The best results are uh, the uh, purple curve and uh, here we see that the, the phase is not as flat as the orange one. And to explain why it provides uh, as a, a better result in terms of power at the central frequency, this is once again a story of uh, a constructive interference. We see that the chirp that we have uh, around the central frequency leads to the interference of several waves. So it will boost uh, the, the constructive interference and it will enable uh, you to obtain a better result at the central frequency. So now let us see if it works experimentally. So for this uh, experimental demonstration we have only used uh, devices that are typical of the telecommunication industry and uh, which are commercially available. So we start from a continuous wave laser that we modulate in intensity. So uh, the resulting pulse are long pulses with a duration of uh, around one picosecond. And if we take uh, the time derivative of this intensity profile, we can see that it can be fitted with a sinusoidal wave. Then uh, the cell phase modulation is uh, experienced in a piece of highly nonlinear fiber. Pulses are recorded after this fiber. And to make uh, the mitigation of cell phase modulation, we just use a phase modulator that is synchronized with uh, the, the pattern that we have. Here, this is a sinusoidal wave that we use uh, on this phase modulator. And what we can see, this is, that it works pretty well. After self-phase modulation, we see that uh, our spectrum is broadened. But when we switch the external sinusoidal phase modulation on, we can see that we restore the, uh, the input shape. In the wings, the conservation is not perfect, but uh, this is not a problem of the experiment. Here, it was also predicted in theory. It works well for value here up to five radians. Uh, it was just here a limitation of uh, the amplitude we can use with our phase modulator. And we can see that the broadening here is very moderate when we have the external phase modulation. Uh, and the, uh, the spectral brilliance uh, remains very high uh, in, uh, in the spectrum, much better than what we have uh, in presence of set phase modulation. To conclude uh, this talk, uh, I have tried to explain how it is possible to understand cell phase modulation qualitatively as a spectral interference process. With this qualitative explanation, then uh, we can derive quite accurately the position of the minima and maxima that are observed in the spectrum. The simplify model uh, can also give a nice estimation of the frequency of the uh, outlying peaks and it can also help to understand what happens when you consider an initial pulse with a linear uh, chirp. So all this uh, can be a good exercise for master students and this method can be very simply extrapolated to many other cases. In the second part of this talk, we used a uh, simple sinusoidal phase modulation to mitigate set phase modulations. To observe the optimum mitigation, we have to slightly tune uh, the parameter of the phase modulation with respect to our uh, analytical guideline. And we have also shown that it is possible to handle pulses that are, uh, that are shorter 
and that pro uh, dispersion in the link is not a problem if you use a pre-compensation rather than post-compensation. So now if you want to have all the details about this, uh, this work, you can find the full derivation of the analytics in this paper and this paper deal with the use of the sinusoidal phase modulation to control what happens when you have uh, this uh, cell phase modulation you want to mitigate.